are they winning or are things kind of looking bad for the pride movement? Let's talk about that as we watch your culture stray further every day. Howdy. My name is John Arthur Fiala for further every day, uh, sitting in the chair of economics here. And, uh, I'm joined all the way to the left of your screen. My right. Miss Nikki is in the chair of theology today. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Well, glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. And, uh, we got Justin. Hey, you remembered my name this time. Absolutely, James. I'm glad. Glad to have you on. <laughs> it's a good thing he said it. I, I probably so, would have forgotten. In the chair, <laughs> in the chair of philosophy, uh, doing our thinking, and then we have uh, for the first time on the show, not in studio. We have Josh. How's it going? Hello. Glad to have you there. Ooh, the mic oh, picks yeah. up your voice real quick. Another clean. Josh. Don't be yeah. afraid, Josh, to like choke up into the mic because you're a little bit far. It's a. Oh yeah, uh, I, I thought it was in the sweet spot. It's you know, like it was picking me up pretty good. There you go. Okay, there. That, that's even better. <laughs> that's even better. And glad to have you there in the chair culture. Of course, we will do chair hopping as we always do. Uh, moving over to Steve. How's it going? Man, it is doing fantastic today. Uh, Did you say fantastic? Fan. Fan, fan. Oh, I heard fantastic. Fan. I was like, what's a van? He's an epileptic. Fan. Don't make fun of him. He's a protected class. What are you doing, yeah, man. you bigot? Look, I'm like a... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I've officially been canceled. I'm yeah. canceled. <laughs> Old man. Come on. Right. So he's in the chair of politics. Mm-hmm. And speaking of canceled, we have Chauncey here. How's it going? What? <laughs> I'm always canceled, but it is what it is. I set the new standard, but... Howdy. <laughs> Glad to have you there sharing the chair of politics with uh, Mr. Steve. And so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm the chair of economics here. Uh, let's start off, Mr. Producer, with that one story uh, from the New York Post. Massachusetts students destroy rainbow decorations at middle school pride event. By the way, uh, links in the description. As always, we will always be providing those links because we're not the mainstream media. Uh, go ahead and... Uh, do that overlay and i want justin actually to kind of pick this yeah. up I'll, I'll kind of kick us off on this um ran into this this week and then melissa who's uh not here today actually uh we went back and forth on this one a little bit so i did some reading here and you can actually see the response but basically what happened was a massachusetts school uh one of their clubs the lgbtq plus and ally club um told the school they wanted to do a pride day you know like you have school pride days where your school colors pajama day well they wanted a pride pride day so june 2nd i believe it was they said cool everyone should wear rainbow colors we're gonna put up all these pride posters put pride stickers on people's backpacks and they were like you know let's go all out for pride as for school spirit right well what happened is there were some students who were like nah right so they come in and they wore red white and blue and they protested it. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky here, how they protested. At one point, they were shouting, my pronouns are USA, right? And they were saying, nope, we're not doing this pride thing. We wore red, white, and blue. Um, But then they also started to take down posters and take down the stickers. And in some news articles, they say that kids felt intimidated and told to cover up their rainbow shirts or whatever. And so kids were starting to put jackets on. And so the school looked at this and went, hey, this is not okay. Right? And so the school then released a statement. And this is where, whew, I, this is where I got heated. Okay. Um, the school in their statement basically says this homophobic behavior will not stand. We need to have a safe environment for everyone. And that means you have to be inclusive. And we taught you know, all better than to be homophobic and intolerant like this. So they reprimanded these, these kids. By calling them names. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they... It wasn't a, hey, I understand you have a different belief, but you can't bully. You can't intimidate. They went straight to not participating is homophobic. Yeah. So. Well, the double standard here is that when the left wants to protest and pull things down and beat people up and burn buildings, that's totally acceptable because you've insulted them and you've offended them. But when the right wants to protest and act like the left then it's wrong. Now, I will tell you, I that's not something I would want my children to behave like that, okay? Uh, I, even though we may disagree, we can be respectful. I, I'm just not into 
destruction of property and, and things like that. I would have been fine if you want to wear uh, red, white, and blue um, as an, instead of the rainbow colors. That would have been fine with me. That's just your opinion, and you get to, to express that. But I would have not encouraged my children to well, so, go the extreme. So here's where I think, and I, and I can't speak for Melissa, but here's where I, I, I want to say the counterpoint to what to what you just said. And this is what the reaction that a lot on the right are going to have is they're shoving child corn in these children's faces. In the in the in, under the name of the LGBT flag, and so the pride flag. Th this is something that a lot of people are going to respond. They're going to say, um, "We're in the middle of a culture war, and we're with people who are actively shoving that in our face." And what that rainbow flag, not the rainbow, but the rainbow flag stands for, is the uh, uh, degradation of children in this context. So when these kids are protesting and reacting that way. What I think some on the right would say is that uh, uh, it's a it's it's a natural reaction. What would be your response to that, Justin? My response is I was pulling something up and missed what your actual question is. Because all of that was to you. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm a man. I'm gonna be all honest. Of, I was multitasking. So let me let me say it one more time. Let me say it one more time. And you know, okay, I'm talking to you. Okay. <laughs> some people's reaction on the right is going to be well they're shoving child corn in our faces and every and all of it is associated with that rainbow flag and you are actively violating not all speech is free speech right like if you're talking if you're talking a man cannot talk to a child a 40 year old man cannot talk to a 12 year old about about uh, uh, non-vaginal sex, right? You know, or sex at all. Like, there's nothing, there's no suitable yeah, context. Like, I'm not sure you need to clarify what type. I'm just saying, I'm just saying any type. Yeah, because you're right, any type. I'm, 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 I'm saying there's no situation where that's appropriate. But now we have teachers doing that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in the context of school. Because it used okay. to be that, that, that you could use euphemisms, birds and the bees, and, and, and it was all rather, rather small. But I'm saying we're talking about graphic, graphic detail. So, so all of that's attached to that rainbow. And these kids, they're reacting. Well, what do you say to the Americans that, that say that's a natural, this is a natural reaction to that? So you're not wrong. It's, it is a natural reaction. But you, you don't always have to act on your feelings the violent way, right? It is a natural reaction to want to say, no, this is wrong. We should not do this this way. That's perfectly fine. However, you you know the phrase fight fire with fire that's a really bad phrase when you're when you're using swords right you know when you start getting violent these kids when i look at how they went about the protest i'm glad they protested you know what speak up for your rights say hey this is not a pride issue this is a matter of opinion you're bringing politics into my school cool then let's talk politics this is where i believe where they crossed the line is when they started damaging the posters when they started intimidating the kids right it's a natural instinct to say i'm getting bullied by this so i'm going to protect myself protecting yourself is fine but what they did was bullied back and that's where we have to be careful that we aren't stooping to their level. So here's a question for Miss Nikki, and I'd like to you to answer this from the, from the chair of theology. Just a thought. Um, isn't this an outgrowth of the church not doing its job, educating so-called Christians on the spirit that they're from. If you remember in the Bible, Jesus said to John, James and John, they said, should we not call down fire as Elijah did onto the uh, Sumerians for not accepting you? What was Jesus's response? Yeah, he, he rebuked them. He says, you don't know the spirit that you are of. Right. I mean, I mean, Christ was very compassionate. And even though he was being rejected, he did have compassion on their souls. And, and to call down fire and brimstone, there still may have been a chance for those people to come to the Christ later on and instead of sending them directly to hell at that moment. You know what I mean? But in, in this situation, the church, when I did my uh, research today on uh, which we'll get to later is Sodom and Gomorrah. 
uh, and the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, many people were going to say, well, it's because they were practicing homosexuality. And actually, that may have been part of it, but that's not the main gist of what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the church has not really done a really good job of loving your neighbor as yourself for those when this first came out. I, re- I remember some of the horrible things that were said from the pulpit. And I have to be honest with you, it was very, this was a real, um, oh my God, what do I want to say? Assault against the, uh, the, the traditional family. Homosexuality to come out in, in the 70s like it was normal, like it was natural. That was not acceptable. However, the church probably, if they had greater knowledge, could have addressed it in a better manner in which they did. Because what you have now is society feels that you either love the gay people and you're for the gay people, which we do love the, 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 the gay people. We just don't champion behavior, but we love the people. But in today's culture, if you don't champion behavior, you hate them. So... I want to get Josh's take on that. Actually, if 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 you if you finish that, because that's a really well stated. I want to get your your take on that culturally. How do you think Christians have kind of fallen back on that? Because what I see, and I want to set the table here. What I see is a culture war that is devoid of the gospel. When you have kids that are tearing, and don't get me wrong, kids are kids. And they need to be taught. They don't know everything, you know, right out of the womb, right? It's a learning process. But we see a lot of Christ, so-called Christian adults acting that way, too, where it's it's about Republican versus Democrat as opposed to good versus evil, saving the individual from the evil. How do you think, how do you think the church has failed the culture in the culture war? Mm, I would say that it's... Sorry, um, don't don't think just lot. talk. Yeah, um, <laughs> don't think oh just talk. You're good. You got this. Um, it's they. It's just letting stuff go, saying it's fine, being accepting of everything when there was supposed to be lines that were supposed to be drawn, stuff that just went too far. Um, like that, that's, that's, I'm not sure if you're aware, but stuff like that's going on in the pride community right now. Um, there's inside conflict going on with them. Yeah. There, there's the whole thing about pride month is what are they supposed to identify as? There's two sides in there right now. There's the side that wants to be just the family oriented friendly and then there's the side that's just out of control yeah sexual desire everything and then those two groups are fighting it out right now even letting uh photo piles into the uh, uh oh yeah the uh um, are you aware of the the maps flag yeah 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 that that that, that came up about a year ago and i'm in a few groups i do uh discord moderation and twitch moderation for certain streamers um and a few of them are also in the community um and i went to them and was like hey if if you support this i'm i'm out i'm dropping yeah like i can't i can't back you up on this so can you explain i'm i'm not familiar with the maps flag that's the minor attracted person oh, um, Lord. Oh, yeah um, okay. i didn't i didn't get that yeah. so, sorry so yeah. they're, 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 they're i knew trying, you knew about it because we've talked about it it was just I the did, acronym yeah, just so, they're trying yeah. to add that to the to the to the pride yeah. uh, um, flag and the acronym this is this is the flag right here okay okay yeah, so, it's just washed out colors of yeah so like the blue is boys the pink is girls. The yellow and the white is innocence. And yeah, that yeah. No, it doesn't sit <laughs> very messed well. Messed up. Messed yeah. up. So, Chauncey, I know you got thoughts. As far as the political and culture, I mean, whatever you want to talk about, as far as the church having having lost the ball, like it, it's almost like we've lost, it's almost like we've lost the, the narrative on what sex is, right? Mm-hmm. And and how how have we lost that as as a church in the culture? I think just getting out of 
such a reality, I think, because uh, you you look at it, no one's one trying to have the real conversations anymore. Um, it's kind of like we live in this fantasy world where uh, the church tries to play church. And I think that's the big issue. It's that you got people that are just going to church and treating it as if it's like a big old club or whatever. Um, and the biggest issue is, is that there is no conviction. So that's why you have a lot of um, Christians that will hold on to these beliefs where they think they could be this way and this. And Matthew 6, 24 says you can't serve two masters. So you're going to serve him or you're going to serve the world. And if you're the friend of the world, then the love of the father is not in you. That's in John's two, you know, and a lot of it. It's all because of that. We're we're out of touch of reality. We're not trying to tell kids exactly the truth. We want to go along with them and go along with the lie and sugarcoat things. And we got to stop doing that because there's already too many diabetes going on in this world. So <laughs> we need to stop sugarcoating stuff. <laughs> Please. So, I like that so, analogy. <laughs> Justin. Yeah. So um, I have. So one of my old churches in Seattle. Um, recently posted on Instagram their new bathroom signs. And they literally, it's the bathroom signs that says biological men, biological women. Right? And I was like, this seems like a a poking the bear situation. Right? Why are we doing this? But then I read the post on it said, due to the legal uh, threats by the Washington State something Department of Humanity blurgaderg, I can't remember the exact wording i'd have to look it up for you um these are our new signs that will be posted up in this next week so i did some research on it and washington state has some new bathroom laws right and the bathroom law is if somebody identifies as this gender or says they do they are allowed to use the bathroom if somebody says i am uncomfortable with that you are to direct the person who is uncomfortable to a single stall single use bathroom so victim blaming in case you're wondering um that's called toxic relationships uh but the church said then we're going to change our signs to be specific biological men biological women and that is a loophole in that law nice and he even said in his post because somebody brought up wow you're just trying to you know stoke a fire he goes no I'm trying to say this is not okay. We're not okay with this. And as a church, we don't believe this. And if we have to fight lawsuits for it, then so be it. Correct. And you know what? That's rare. That is a rare church. Most churches are going to go, well, let's avoid the lawsuit and just go to single stall bathrooms everywhere. Actually, um, but- I, I, I like that idea. The single stall bathrooms um, instead of the bathrooms that we have now. Mm. But is that avoiding like the issue? Yeah. It I is like avoiding it. the mm. issue. I like it until you have to build it. I'm just telling you what the cost is. Oh, the cost is, is going to be tremendous. Yeah. Yes. Um, also, going off of Washington, there was also another thing that happened the previous week. There was a person who came into a bathhouse in Washington State. That's and right. And they wanted to use the woman's bathhouse section. Oh, I remember that. And yes. that, that caused... A lot of issues. I believe the bathhouse shut down and pretty much the state ordered them to go through sensitivity training, sensitivity training. Yes, correct. Yeah. So, I mean, and now I'm looking over at Steve and I'm going, let's talk politically here. Why? Why does the government get to just all of a sudden start deciding these things? Right. Like, like, where is this going to (laughs) stop with the government? Depend depending on it's going to actually depend on. Who's in the government at the time? And it's not necessarily who the president is, but who is giving the president advice, his advisors. Because that's just like um, Potato Head we got in there right now. Um, <laughs> There's you know, your we shirt. all know that he doesn't know what's going on. But he's got advisors that are telling him, this is what you need to say. This is what you need to do. We're going to put it up right here on this screen, and we're going to have you say. Because if he doesn't say what's on the screen, and he's just given an open mic to talk, 
I mean, come on. Man, we know what happens. Fish a man for a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He he can't talk if if you just give him the mic to talk. Yeah, he, he can't he go. Can't, he, he just he can't blows it. Yeah. yeah. And have you ever well, seen someone that's trying to sign language when he's just talking without a screen to read? It's like trying to follow. I mean, it's it's absurd. They don't know what to do. They're making up words. I mean, really, help you understand? I, I watched it. I watched one one time, and it was just. I was like, so. And the look on this lady's face was like, "What am I doing?" But so I'm wondering, from a business standpoint, though, right? When you think, and maybe chair of economics should chime in on this too. What gives the government the right to say your business has to take a sensitivity training? So here's so that's a really good question, and the 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 what would be the right word? The explanation or the excuse for this, the justification for this, would be that we are protecting the public health, and this is where the answer of what is true becomes very important. You cannot simply have my truth. Because now what the government can do is they can make a personal economic decision on what your business does and how you go about business, how you interact with people, because silence is violence, because using pronouns is violence against transgenders it, that, you know, that, that, that are incongruent. Is with that a preference. publicly traded business, though? A private business may be totally different. It doesn't matter if it's publicly traded or not. I don't think it's publicly well, traded. Uh, bathhouse. But it doesn't matter if it's publicly <laughs> traded or not. Here's the truth. If if you have someone, if you have someone who is actually uh who is actually doing something that is violent or or harmful as a company to people. If you had a company say that was enslaving black people out back, right? Amazon. Okay. <laughs> but we know why they but we know we know why they're allowed to get away with it because uh th- there's a corporate confluence there uh with the government. Uh, private public partnerships are from hell. Uh anyway, uh just you can quote me on that. Uh but, <laughs> I will that's but, our first short. But but you have this this thing where the reason you can't just do that openly is because there's something evil and wrong there and we've all agreed that that's wrong Mm -hmm. the issue here is is that we have a disagreement of what's right and wrong in regards to transgenderism that's the real problem here you you know have um i was reading an article where there's a college here that has changed the definition of yes. lesbian, and, yep. I, and and I wanted to oh, get to that, and, and that's and a good transition. I wanted to get non men who have a relationship with other non men. Pull up the John Hopkins okay, okay. St- yeah. story, please, and, Mr. Producer. No, and it, I'm thinking that's the okay. They don't know what a woman is. Well, no, that was really the actual I mean, definition come on. for years and years. A lesbian is a non-man who has relationships with non-men. And this is where Josh was talking earlier. He goes, there's war in the LGBTQ community. And, you know, we there's a war going on between LGBTQ and non-LGBTQ. But, dude, LGBTQ is losing within themselves right now. Shouldn't, because they, shouldn't because the, L, the, the, L, the lesbian, the gay, and the bisexual negate the transgender. The thing is, people don't realize. Yeah, go ahead. The thing is, people don't realize is that you actually have a, a serious, serious problem with lesbian gays is a behavior, and they say it's immutable. Transgender says that you can change the immutable, and people don't realize that those two things, those are value statements that are self defeating. And so you're right; they've been at war at that for a long, long time. But now, what you have is John Hopkins, and, and if you don't know who John's Hopkins is, well. First off, where's your head been? Uh, or, or, or you're very young, but it's the one of the primary leading institutes as far as research and development. So go ahead and scroll down that story, right. please. As far as deciding what is medically safe, what is medically, medically sound, what's, what's intelligent. So here it says, Johns Hopkins pulls lesbian definition from uproar over the use of non-men instead of women. The university's online glossary of LGBTQ terms and identities define the word uh, lesbian as a non-man attracted to non-men before it was taken down so this well yeah it's because the l now would represent 
transgender. And transgenders go, no, don't lump me in with them. I want my own letter in this alphabet. And, and here comes into the conversation Matt Walsh and his deal, what is a woman? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, come on. John Hopkins doesn't know what a woman is? Well, well, a, a non-man. Wouldn't the well, feminists so, be jumping up and down? Da- shouldn't they be jumping up and down right now? Yeah. Well, and they, I and mean, they do, really? And they do, and they're called they're TERFs. Sure. They're, they're called TERFs. Trans-exclusionary radical feminists. Trans-exclusionary radical feminists. You ever heard the term TERF? It's been applied to people like uh, J.K. Rowling, someone who's no friend of Christians or conservatism at all. However, however, she has the temerity to at least say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Women's spaces are for women, and women are women, and men are men. And you now have a situation where you have a predatory person coming into a bathhouse with his with his junk on the table in front of twelve year old girls, and these twelve year old girls are seeing things that are just not not something that you you, you want to show uh, a prepubescent or 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 early prepubescent kid, really anyone. I don't want to see that. So. These turfs are are now somehow the bad guys, but it's because it eats itself mm-hmm. every time. Yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, they're just eating each other up. And just like if you leave them alone long enough, they they won't come after the one side. They'll they'll eat each other within. That that's what's going on right now. It, it's the same thing as a changing of a definition. It, one of the other things on the John Hopkins website was um, they're wanting to change. Uh, Spanish as a language. They want to make it non-gendered. Is Spanish That's is wrong. very gendered. Yeah. Yes, it is. There's a bunch of other languages out there that are super gendered. Latin, uh, Latin languages Mandarin, in general. French, uh, or a few. And I'm not gendered? sure that's going to um, go over um, very well. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, just please. We can't uh, switch to the metric system. What makes you think you're going to switch a whole language they can, to non-gender? They can just gender themselves. Uh, I'm sorry, they, they can go gender themselves. Yeah, it, it's just yeah. like changing a whole language, though. That's just yeah. absurd. That's just absurd. How do? Can you imagine? You you grew up in a Spanish speaking household or French speaking household, and all of a sudden you can't even use certain words because now they want to take the genders out of the words. I mean, it has a meaning. And then how are you going to read articles these days? Like, are you supposed to non-gender the language? Amasita, no hablan con él anymore. Whack, whack, whack with the chongo. That's that's how that conversation goes. I'm just saying. No <laughs> matches. I'm just saying. <laughs> In one of the communities I have, it was like someone is actually trying to do it that way. They're trying to non-gender Spanish while they learn it. They, uh, uh, yes. how's that? What? That's not even going to be possible. I, I, I don't. I. I, I it, it seems like a it, headache, but I mean, well, I, they're making work. they're making life harder for you themselves. Know what? You know what? With for more no reason, with more slaves in the world than there ever have been, with more mm. people who are being religiously persecuted than ever have been, ever happened in the history of the earth. Why are we? Complaining. I'm, I'm, I'm having to self center here because it gets really, it gets really, really aggravating. Why are we complaining about the gender of language when your your freaking iPad and, and iPhone and, and Androids, those things are, are are mined out of out of cobalt mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and you have it in China where you you talk about going green. The battery in your phone and and the and the battery in your Tesla come out of these sloughs where they kill entire. They kill in your laptop. Your, See, I told you. Your yeah. laptop is a matter. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Mickey's battery is full. I have to fix Mickey's battery. I told you. The AI, so you know. But, <laughs> but, I told you the AI is the Antichrist. But <laughs> no, but, we talked about that. If you want yeah. to know if the AI is the Antichrist, go back to podcast one hundred. Yeah, it's yeah. a good. That's, that's a good plug. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. That's, that's real good. But um, and by the way, buy the merch anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, subscribe, and follow. Exactly. <laughs> Hit that bell. Ding, ding. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to get a transition for that, Ryan, so you, so you can you can hit the bell every once in a while. We'll, we'll get <laughs> yeah. you one. Ryan, Ryan over there is like, where is it? I'm like, it's not there yet. I promise we'll get it there. 
We'll get anything. Oh, okay. Corn. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get those on. But anyway, so you want to go green. You want to do all that. But all of these things, you, you, people don't realize that all of these things that we enjoy in this life are, are are built off the back of slaves that we do not see. They live in countries that do we do not know. And then like the likes of the Chinese, Chinese Communist Chinese. Party. Again, it's not China. It's, it's not the people. It's the Chinese Communist Party doing it to their own people where they will wash away the toxic slews uh, from the lithium and the uh, cobalt and and the uh, uh, gallium uh, and arsenide mines where right. they will pour it into the river and it'll kill a whole village like overnight. All, and of, and yes. all of that is happening in the world. And we are worried about if Oblo is masculine or feminine. <laughs> hey, check this out. Let me Oblo okay. something, right? What, what is the second language that they print on just about everything in America? Not only that, our southern border is halfway open and and our government is telling what everybody hey come on in come on in come on in and what do they speak spanish yeah you can't speak that, sir. Hey, uh, whoa, wait a minute. That's true. You can't speak that. When you enter well, America. You people, before you can come in, you got to speak English so now, or some other language. Or so, 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 so. You know what? I just, so, I just so now, have to speak. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. So now they don't have to take the American test. Now they got to take a Spanish test. <laughs> My gosh, the Spanish test is gender. non-gender. So, so here's Spanish a here's test. a thought I mean, on really? that though. Portugal so, has a different Portugal Portuguese. Uh, Portuguese. Portuguese, right? Which is kind of Spanish, but not quite. Spain right. has a different Spanish than Mexico. Correct. It's possible that this will turn into an, an American Spanish, where. There's American no Island. yeah, and American. So would this Spanish. so would this further the um the modern day uh song movement that goes on in church? I'm LGBTQ no. and I speak I in just the imagine, tongues of I just no imagine gender. you've got a you've got so th- this would be a great sketch idea. I just imagine that you have a blue haired or purple haired uh, uh border patrol agent saying uh uh Alte instead of like Alto and uh uh the in the in the Fainty says, you know, cartel member goes, what? And they just shoot the border patrol you. agent. <laughs> Bullets I mean, are non-gender, I, y'all. I mean, like, and they say, bendejo loco, and they just shoot him. It's like, but you didn't use the right uh, uh, gendered word as they die so right on the side down. of the... You know, the yeah, them bullets don't have no gender. I'll tear him for dying his hair. I'll tear you for dying. I have the you're, you're the one with the... You're as dependent. <laughs> No, he's dependent hey, on me, actually. Listen, listen oh, to this. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> listen to this. Well, Here, Miss Nikki had something, too. Miss Nikki, please <laughs> edify posted, this conversation. I posted an article in our chat, um, and we're, we're talking about gender here. And in a school, in an elementary school, there's a girl, little girl, that is so distraught because the teacher is saying there is no such thing as boys and girls there's huh it's almost it's, it's it's almost like it made the little girl uncomfortable almost like you don't have a yeah, right to well, make someone uncomfortable to to or bathroom. you your yeah. friends or whatever because you know and then what are they going to do they're going to teach them about you know all of this homophobia or homosexual sex well, now wait a minute when we were in school, Nikki and I, you didn't learn about sex education until you got until like ninth grade. I think we talked about that a week or two ago. Yes, we did. Okay, yeah. now what are they wanting to do? Teach you about what? Homophobic sex in homosexual. elementary school. Homosexual sex. Yeah, I think. I mean, really? I think Justin and I, when we were going, they they did basic sex ed around in like fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yeah, and we talked about that a and couple weeks ago. How it yeah. keeps getting lower, lower for absolutely no reason. Yeah, and that, so, they gave us sticks of deodorant because we stunk. So. <laughs> oh, I do oh remember gosh. that now. <laughs> that Ms. was Nikki. my first deodorant. Ms. John Nikki. Arthur, help me with his verse. <laughs> okay. But the verse is, they worship the create uh, the create. Created. Created, yes. The creation. And not the creator. Creator. Correct. They they will worship creation over the creator. So that really is talking, I'm worshiping my body. So when when these people are saying, I don't know what I am right now, or I was made this way, this is really a self-worship 
um, problem that has come in. And it really, you know, and I do want to bring this up because of Sodom and Gomorrah, because I really, it's Pride Month, and I want to show you what the number one sin in Sodom was. And we're going to go to Ezekiel sixteen forty nine and 50. <clears throat> Behold, this was the iniqu- iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, abundance of idleness was in her and her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. They were haughty and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. So, so go to that third one that was in that list. It was pride, fullness of bread, and then what was that? Abundance of idleness. So, so that part there. Yes. Remember, the idle mind is a devil's workshop. And so when you have everything you need, you're not going to be paying attention to the one upstairs. You're not going to be paying attention to the Son or the Holy Spirit. You're going to basically just think that they are non-existent because you have everything in life. And because they have everything handed to them, they could just do whatever they want. And that's what the government is setting up right now, is that they're giving... Sorry, but they're giving this community all of these passes, all of these passes, all of these laws. And I'm going I'm to speak on this because thank God for, the, for, for my background. But they even have more rights than black people. They just do. They do. I mean, yeah, we got the, the 13th Amendment, the 14th and 15th. But you see all these laws they passing just for them. Well, and it's to get the vote. It's it's they want Pandering. to power. That's, that's exactly what that is. Pandering, but but it's not going to work once no. they realize it's getting really annoying. Because that's why a lot of people are leaving the left anyway. Because it's a bunch of pandering. So, and that can take us to uh, Detroit, actually. Yeah. Um. So Detroit talked about this, uh, mm-hmm. or a city outside of Detroit, or you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So they Get had. A whole conversation about um, they wanted to put the pride flag up in the uh, in front of the the hall of the city, the city hall. I was Mm going to get there eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they had this big meeting about it. And basically, Detroit said, nah, you don't need that. Uh, One of the quotes here, uh, the council member, Nahum. I should have practiced that. It's the council a, member, yeah. uh, referring to the LGBT community and its supporter, why do you have to have the flag shown on government property to be represented? That was their major thing of, we don't do this for any other group. We don't put flags Roll up down. for any Please. other group. That's why true. do you think you have to have your flag up to be represented? We represent you. You don't need a flag to prove that. Well, I remember I saw this short here, and uh, I think it was on YouTube. Well, actually, on Instagram, and the guy explained the flag here behind us. You know, that blue and them stars right there, it represents everybody. So the factor that you got 50 stars, and then you got this blue all around it, them 50 stars, that should just show you that everyone is included. If you was in this country... But they got represent- yeah. But they got this pride issue. They need to be individually called out. Mm-hmm. Well, pride. so so that's the pride. That's the thing that just yeah. drives me nuts. It's, it's a, a thing, thing about, about it's seriously it's it, it's a thing about narcissism. I mean, it's ultimately the culture of narcissism. It's the culture of selfies. It's the culture of constant self gratification of microwave culture, where you get everything instantly. You always handed everything right to you, where you demand that everything be handed on you a silver platter because you're used to it, and you lived through a a elementary and high school where you were given participation trophies where you're the special guy your mommy's little special (laughs) snowflake because you're special without without putting in effort without putting in any effort without changing it's unearned merit and so and that's the and that's the whole thing the wildest thing about rapid onset gender dysphoria is that you have unearned merit where people will go and say hey you know the easiest thing for me to do in this current environment to get school credit if I, if I were a high schooler, I could say I was queer. And I could paint my nails black and all of a sudden guess what? I didn't, I would not have to sleep with a boy. I could still be into girls. 
but I would get that whole protected class status as, and by the way, as the most hated class in America right now, as far as racism is concerned, it's an easy out. It's an easy out. So you have the fear, but then you also have the incredible amount of pride, Steve. And, and you know, what's interesting about that is, is they have the more rights than anybody else, but the religious rights and and they call it the religious right mm -hmm. like people that are far right because you're religious they consider you far right but it's the rights of the religious you basically have no rights is what they're basically saying well you can't have you can't do this well why can't i Radical inclusionism will mean that you are excluding. I, I am also a group of people also that have my beliefs just because my group is a little larger percentage in the population does not mean that I also don't have rights. I also have freedom of speech guaranteed in the Constitution, just like you and not only that, it was given to me by God, period. Just like your freedom of speech and your rights were given to you by God. That's why you have and are able to speak like you do. It's almost like we made a mistake letting government teach civics. What civics they don't you know what that. I mean? Because they don't understand. They don't understand that rights are recognized. They're, they're given by God and they're recognized by government. Instead, now what we have, and, and we covered this a few podcasts ago about how the government in the uh, in the more recent amendments has been has been bestowing upon the people rights. It used to be way back when in the in the original framing of the Constitution, the Articles of Confederation. You see how people how it was all laid out. The rights were always recognized, not granted. It's not a shall grant, it's a shall recognize, or rec these rights are given by God, and it enumerates the rights. Now, when you look at modern amendments, and by the way, the 13th and 14th Amendment, not to stir up trouble, but some of the way that they did it, they did it so that the government was enumerating or giving the right instead of it being recognized by God. And that was something that was That's creeping an important in the point. 1900s. Mm -hmm. That is yeah, very important point. Important point. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not saying any, thank God for those amendments, yeah. but freeing slaves, for those who don't know, freeing the slaves, right? Okay. Saying, saying, saying that it does, you shall make no exception based on race, color, creed. Okay. And the thank church God. should have been the loudest voice, but we were the asleep. loudest voice I agreed, but we were asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, because, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil and how many, quote unquote Christians were reaping off the benefits mm -hmm. of keeping black people in slavery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, Christians. It, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Quick note of correction. Point still stands. The verse is the love of money is a root of evil, not the root of all evil. Just quick biblical correction. Thank it you. doesn't change the point, but just so you know the person who's gonna call us out in the comments. <laughs> But, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So a actually, okay. Because you did that, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to come in and say that the love of money is a, is a translation of a word that is similar to avarice. Mm -hmm. It means the desire for self gain mm -hmm. is the root in the article. If you, if you are actually depending on which translation you read, cause you're right. There are, there's, there are translations that render it very much that way. Mm -hmm. But if you read the one thing, the NIV, I, I, I do not like the NIV Bible. The one, the one thing the NIV got did that was actually not bad is they rendered that avarice, which means the desire for self, uh, import or self gain. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the root of all evil. Uh, and, sure. and, and they use the, they use the specific article. Yeah. I know. Mm. So, so see, it, and this is funny. why we bring things up in the podcast so that the chair of theology and the chair of knowing <laughs> other languages can fix me. No, I mean, Hey, <laughs> we're all learning. I, I, I learned that in my mind. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden that saying has a whole new meaning to me now. Yeah. Yeah. That little verse. Chauncey, I know you've been itching. I mean, 
what I was going to say was, is, uh, yeah, because the, those amendments where we was, they were speaking on was absolutely true. Um, yes, it was some heated moments in those times. And then the fact that somebody after Lincoln came through and was like, hey, uh, these Negroes ain't recognized by me. Uh, we're going to take them, 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 them rights away from them. And so they threw black codes on them and nullified that. And then once they started to realize that, oh, this guy's really who he is. Like, by the way, Andrew Johnson, I don't because people was giving Trump the smoke about how racist he was and everything. But look up Andrew Johnson, do some research and then you really see who's the really the most racist president. Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Uh, well, Johnson, no, Johnson, 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 Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, oh, the one right after Andrew Johnson. Yeah, the one right after Lincoln. Yeah. yeah. So, Democrat, by the way, and actually, he was a successor because a Democrat assassinated a Republican president. Just, yeah. Just what we're counting on. The board. Well, what's interesting is you know, I mean, we could get into talk about. I like presidential history, so never mind. I was going to divert us. <laughs> we'll, 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 do we'll do one on Buchanan. Just my mind. We'll do one on Buchanan just for you, my friend. <laughs> but speaking about presidential history and recent presidential history, at a uh, event at the White House, we had a transgender activist flashing uh, his her. Uh, Let's talk about yeah. that. I want to talk about how the pushback to the so. It, it's, it's kind, kind of, of one of those things, things where, where, where it's, it's like, like, okay, we just want to be left, left alone. So go, go ahead and get that uh, NBC article ready, please, Mr. Producer. And, and uh, But not the pictures. We just, no, no, no. No, no, no. We're, yeah, doing no, no. We're, doing we're doing the pictures. We're doing the pictures. We're doing the video. And, and we're going to react to it. Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> So, and be monetized. <laughs> we'll never be monetized. YouTube is actively suppressing this channel. I mean, they're not real, so we're we're we're, we're starting. We're starting to use code words. We're starting to try to be a little bit more careful about how we go about this. But anyway, uh, all that said, all that said, it, it's it's like it's like the gal or or sorry, it's it's like the person that says, "Look, I just want to be able to do gay marriage. I want to be gay married. Okay, cool. Leave me alone." Uh, I want, I want you, you to, to celebrate, celebrate with me. With no, I'm not going to make your cake. That's a that's, that's an artistic expression. expression. No, no, no. no. Uh, okay. Well, at, at least at, at least, least we, we don't, don't have, have to. to. So th- th- there was a little meme about this. At least at least you don't uh, have our have your kids involved in it. And now they have our kids involved in it. Well, at least we're not sacrificing your ch- your children to Moloch. It's like, well, aren't we kind of now with Unix? I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it's just going down. So they keep pushing and they keep going. And, you know, maybe I could have seen, you know, I remember back in 2013, I saw the argument of live and let live as a young, as, as a young guy. I said, just get out of the public square. But that's, that's what, what this, this leads to. It leads to this. So go ahead and uh, uh, scroll down and start that video. Uh, started from the beginning and yeah, or better yet, scrub, scrub until you see the, 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 the trans activist taking off his, her top. This is a male to female, uh, conversion and go ahead and just play it. See if it'll play. Is it, is it playing nice for you, Mr. Producer? I don't think it's playing. Okay. Well, see what you can do. Uh, with that said, this man is now grabbing his, augmented chest and doing this with two females biological females who've had theirs removed and uh go, go and pull up that picture bud yeah yeah go and bring that back so it's this individual link in the description below you can watch the whole video go ahead and get, get rid of that thank you for trying uh sometimes the internet here is yeah but uh, our, our, our administrator, I think, I think they have something blocking certain videos. So anyway, things act mm-hmm. weird. But the reaction to that, actually, actually from the White House, House was, is well, we actually disapprove of this behavior, and this person won't be invited back. Okay. I mean, at least the heat from the public was so bad that um, they had to do something. Well, yeah. I mean, you get to a point where. All of a sudden, <clears throat> the rest of the world are going, okay, cool. We're going to treat you like humans. But that means you're going to be treated like a human. And if any human does that, we're going, that's not okay. This is what you wanted. You wanted to be treated as an equal. Guess what? That's not okay no matter who you are. And now they're pushing back going, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. 
why don't I get special privilege? Their fight now is not for equality. They're fighting for privilege. Equal rights, equal lefts. I, <laughs> no. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, if you want, if you want to, if you want to do what anyone else does, expect or expect a reciprocal response. And here's the thing: this individual comes back and says, and if you watch the video, I was, I was, I was hoping we would get it, but we didn't. That's fine. This individual says, uh, "I don't understand. Going topless in DC is allowed." So what's really interesting to me is that technically everything that this individual did was legal and has been occurring at every every pink pussy hat march that, that, that's been out there. They've been doing this. But the reason why they put backlash on it is even the Biden admin went, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe we need to like save a little bit of face here because people are fed up. People are tired of it. LGBT is starting to lose battles. Because they've gone too far. They keep pushing. They, yeah. they keep pushing. If they just left it at, at, at homosexual marriage or, God forbid, if they just stuck at, at civil union, I don't think we would be talking about it. I think we'd be talking about how to deal with, with, with childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think this is part of the issue with Pride Month. You have given them two months because there's another Pride Month in October. Right. Because the month is actually for certain events. Right. But so they have this pride month. And so they go, cool, we have to go all out. This is the month we get to fight hard and we get to do what we want. You know, and, and the pride month is now harming the LGBTQ community because it's giving them this idea that they can do whatever they want. And they're now having to suffer repercussions. How, how come we don't have a month for veterans? That's we have a day. day. There's a day. There's a holiday. day. There's a day. How come we don't have a month for veterans? Yeah. What? You I mean you think about it? They have done more for this country than any pride person or any of those have ever done getting for your, this country, other than changing your choice of friction or getting or getting something cut off is mm -hmm. nothing creating problems and creating trauma for children I fat you know what i'm saying uh -huh. and not only that think about this okay just just a thought here mm -hmm. you've got trans people changing over man changes to visually to a woman what he, what he considers I guess that's to be what you a can woman, actually okay? define a woman is that, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but he may, he may look visually mm -hmm. like a woman and claim to be a woman and want to be called a woman, but does that man actually think like a woman? More importantly, is he? Is he? Yeah, he's not. Of course, it, it, we it, know it, he's not. No, he's not. Biologically, but also, does that guy think like a woman thinks? No. No. Really? I mean, can we actually, me so and you or any of us guys in here, think like but it Miss Nikki over here thinks but change, like but a change, woman does? Change, change the no. argument. Change the argument because the argument you're making is not bad, but it, there, there's a better argument because there are men that do think more femininely and there are women who think more masculinely. Beta. The question is not no. – no, this is true. There is a continuum of effeminate versus masculine. The problem is, is what are they? What are they? It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what you are. It matters what right. you are and what God created you to be, what your telos, what your purpose is in life, where you're coming. I'm stepping in your chair here, the bit of philosophy here. It matters what you were designed to be, who you are from the ground up. That's what matters. Who you are I agree. is what matters. It does not matter what you think. It does not matter anything other than what you are, what were you designed to be, and where are you going? I agree those with you. Those are the three things that are really important questions. And if we can't answer those questions correctly, then we as a society are screwed. I'm sorry. It's, I agree. That's completely mm -hmm. agree yeah. with you. Com totally, completely agree with you. But there is no way that a man, I don't care how feminine you think you are Baylor. or how you feel, you can't think like a woman thinks. There's no way you may. Dylan Mulvaney. 
Dylan Mulvaney is a straight guy who's a troll. I'm sorry. Okay. He's just trolling. Or any feminine guy Almost goes positive. around, they like to f- believe that they, because of the act they put on, and they act like this. I, man, they cannot think like a woman thinks because yeah. they are not a woman. And that's the point that you're getting at. They are not a woman. It's what you are. Let yeah. me just so say there's this. there's no way for them <laughs> to think that Let me just say this. Way. I know Chauncey's waiting to say something, but I just want to say this. <laughs> Most men don't want to think like a woman. They don't want to try to figure out a woman. They just said, please make it simple. <laughs> My husband is telling me all the time, please talk to me in headlines and not in articles. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And by the way, you, you mentioned Dylan Mulvaney, and then we've got one more thing to talk about. Chelsea is dying to talk. He's got something to say. I, I, I can see it. I mean, on, my, my thing is, is like we don't have a whole month dedicated to men. We don't have a whole month dedicated to women. Well, yeah, I mean, there is. I mean, this, actually, this there's month a woman's month, month. Yeah, awareness month. Yeah, but but no one's shedding no light on that though. You see what I'm saying? It it's like you got your proclivities. Your yeah. choice of friction is the is the is the focus. Yeah, but but there's no shedding no light on that. Like yeah. there's no light on it whatsoever well i'm starting to wonder if the lgbtq next year is going to shine a little less light because uh this light is not making them look good which brings us to our next point well yeah and i and, 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 and i want to get there but real quick you mentioned dylan mulvaney i don't want to talk long on this i just want to say one thing remember we said the easiest way to get street cred right now is to come out as gay and then after it was gay it was queer and after it was queer it was transgender guess what dylan mulvaney has done all of gay, them. queer, then transgender in that order, and now he's straight with okay. extra steps. He's he's pursuing a woman right now. So all of that to say, my, guys, he is pursuing a woman. He's said that, okay? I'm and he's just, equipped. But what's a woman? He's though? equipped. So yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> It's a non-man. So, a non-man. <laughs> so speaking. So speaking of the of the j- transition, because I, you know, I did, I did want to use your transition man. there. That was a nice segue. A non-man. It's not looking good. In fact, what we see is, uh, to Justin's point, we see a uh, an issue with Activision has recently made a huge misstep. And I, I was looking it oh, up. I don't see anyone Kyle checking Diddy. it yet. I don't see anyone checking it yet. Uh, and I, I've, I've, got, I've got to go look up their stock price, but I wonder if it's no. going to take a hit. No, no, no. Because, 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 because be, let me get there. Pull up the story, please. If, you, if you've if you been watching this for the past couple of weeks, uh, Nick Merckx actually said something very, very spicy. He said, uh, during the California school protests, go ahead and scroll down just a little bit, uh, more. He said, yeah, more. He said that, uh, hey, this, to the tweet, he said, we just need to leave kids alone during the protests that you see there on that Twitter where people are agitating. Both sides get a- active. They start throwing hands and they, and, and there's, there's a, there, there's a tussle. And they say, look at all this hate. And what Nick Merckx comes out and says, he says, hey, they just need to leave the kids alone. I think that's the real problem. And I think that was word for word his tweet. Um, it is. And Activision canceled Nick Merckx. Go ahead. They yeah. Um, they took all his skins down. Also, so adding on a, to that, um, what do his skins do? By the way, just for people who aren't Call of Duty players, what is that whole thing, and what does that mean? They they canceled his livelihood, right? In part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it it yeah it takes away that was sponsorship money, all of that. Um, mm-hmm. I think just today or yesterday. It was announced he got pulled from the Call of Duty League. Also, mm-hmm. that's huge. Um, People don't- it is. Uh, hey, uh, it's- guy, can you pull up the web page again and scroll to the top? Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. So right there, that yep. right there is the image. That is his likeness, and then they turned him into an operator in said video. Yeah. Game. So, so his skin is a him. cosmetic 
feature that makes you look like something or wear certain clothing or whatever. So it's the cosmetic what you look like in the game. Yes. So you can make your own and put them in the game and then people can buy them and use them and so things like that. So when you get something in, or you've done so much in the game you can buy stuff Yeah, in or the just game, use or you straight just up cash. Or you can use your cash and buy yeah. yeah. So oh, it's okay. a form, yeah. it's a it's his income. And so just so you're wondering all oh, boo hoo the 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 gamer has to go out and see some sunlight. No, no, no. You don't understand. Uh, who was it? Was it uh, XQC? Uh, just mm-hmm. signed a one hundred million dollar non exclusive contract with what Man. was the what, what was the name? It's it's the twelfth largest sports contract that has ever been signed. I'm trying to remember Cameron. the name, but it, it was some some random streaming service that I'm not familiar with, and he's leaving Twitch, and he doesn't have to leave Twitch, but he is. Oh, it is the rival of Twitch. I I, for, I know exactly but, what you're talking about, but so so yeah. With that said, I just I just saw that pop up news. Uh, uh, Charlie over at uh, Penguin Zero who would teach you uh, everything brought that up. So you're looking at Nick Merckx is one of those guys that that lost. He lost huge, kick. and he's kick. Kick. Yeah, kick. Yeah. So, so, so you're losing huge Boku dollars when you're in that situation. So Tim Maybe the Tap Man, Tim the Tap Man, asked his. He's another big gamer. Again, we're talking about seven million viewers on on YouTube, and then when you're on Twitch, it's a whole different game. When you have three hundred thousand plus uh, uh, subscribers who are paid subscribers, that's huge. That's a lot of money that's being taken. Tim the Tap Man removed it. Doctor Disrespect, uh, four million, uh, just sub four million uh, viewers on YouTube or subscribers on YouTube uninstalled it on a stream. He goes, until Activision changes what they're doing, we need to get rid of everything Activision on a computer. We are going to boycott them. Yeah, he said, apologize and reinstate the skin. So, or apologize or reinstate. Either one. And he, he, you know, I I think that's a very, very fine one. So you, you guys... A lot of people in this room do not know who these guys are, but this is a space that is, more, is apolitical. This mm-hmm. is a space that's apolitical. This is not something that we should be. There, there needs to be a place where there's not an echo chamber, and it, whether it's football, whether it's baseball, whether it's video games, whether it's uh, America's Got Talent, there's got to be a place where we can all go and we can enjoy entertainment Let, and not have it destroyed. But what they want to do is they want to break it. But I'll, I'll speak on the sports part because I was heavily into watching the NFL and watching basketball. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, the typical black guy. Yeah, call me the typical black guy. I am the typical black guy. But anyway, so. That's racist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm already canceled as is. So it is what it is. So when the NBA came out with this whole Black Lives Matter thing and it was kneeling to this, you know, whatever motto that was, you know, kneeling to, I stopped watching the NBA for a complete whole two years. I didn't even watch the NBA Finals. I don't even know the last person who won the NBA Finals. That's how I know that I wasn't watching the NBA. But they lost a ton of money. money. And that's yeah. and so that's what we need to do as a culture. Guys, you, you don't have to spend all of your time watching sports, watching video games. Guess what? Uh, watching Playing video games is more fun. Uh, and also, there are better games than Call of Duty. Call of Duty has how really... <laughs> <laughs> that, Call of Duty. That's perfect. Thank you, Ryan. That was yeah. perfect. Yeah. That was perfect. Uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty's most recent drop has been terrible. Like their more, more oh. recent games have been just totally subpar. So why don't we go find oh, yeah, someone who does a better job? Horrible. Yeah. Why don't we find someone who does a better job? So and, and that's the thing with like with Bud Light with Target. And with, with the Target, there's there's Walmart for the things that you need. And then there's a, the other stores. I know some of you guys are gonna Walmart. Okay, that's oh. fine. But Coles, there's other places yeah. where we can go. It's right. cool world. So let's start to when someone makes the mistake of being that woke as a culture. Target now, I think it's twelve billion dollars they've lost in revenue, uh, or n- not, not revenue, stock price. Yeah, yeah. and it keeps. Mm-hmm. I, I keep going back. I mean, this war on non LGBTQ, they're losing it. We're we're finding more and more that the philosophy of people are less and less going with hey no we should totally support these people to we've supported them they're doing pretty well what do they want from us allyship is down by the way allyship is way down and then i'm gonna get get to you allyship is crashed it's about half of what it used to be five years ago uh mr producer remind me to find that stat and post it in the chat write that down please allyship 
for LGBT has gone down. I want to find out by how much. We'll put that stat in the, in um, the description. Yeah, and another thing is like Bud Light. They're down twenty five percent from last year, and that's that's major. Yeah, that's major that, for that's a company. Huge. And that's, that's still being propped up by by again BlackRock, Vanguard, J P Morgan, and so it's probably more, Miss Nikki. Well, I was just going to say that I really believe that the greatest revival coming before the Lord returns will be the young people. They they have been so abused with a lot of this stuff. And um, even now, with what you were talking about, the maps, and with the, the transgender and the, the surgeries that they're doing, the gender affirming of, of small children, these are going to be your voices of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And they're already starting to be the voice of tomorrow. And it's not sustainable. So if you think transgenderism is here to stay, it's not. It's mm-hmm. not. The surgeries and all that, that's not here to stay because there's going to be the cancer. There's going to be the physical ailments that are going to come. There are going to be the tears and the heartbreaks of those who thought they were doing the right thing, had the surgeries, and now they'll never have children. They'll never have a normal sexual relationship. Those tears and those heartaches are coming. They will be your voice of tomorrow, and they are going to rebuke you severely. Mm-hmm. Amen. Going on, on top of that is also um, the thing where certain states are going in and saying, we're, we're blocking this care now. And then those people that are saying, oh, we can no longer provide you the care. The care is pretty much you're getting treatment lifelong yeah, for the rest of your life because mm-hmm. of this. So pretty much if you want to continue that way and swap, it's just and then now saying, oh, you're stuck. If you want to seek care, you have to move. You have to leave where you are right now. Well, HR, so that's a whole and, conversation that we'll need to have. Like, maybe next week we have a conversation on the, ra- the underground rainbow. That's a whole. Rainbow underground? R- yeah, the rainbow. Rainbow under- underground, though. That's the, a whole. The rainbow interesting- railroad. So oh, yeah, yeah. there are, there are to, places. Uh, Mario Kart and plan. <laughs> there are places. I want to have that conversation potentially, actually, maybe next week, because that's actually a really interesting conversation. We don't have time for today. There are places where you can still get HRT uh, if, if, if it's, if it's. It's life, life necessary, right? But we don't want to start new. We don't want to start more people on HRT. Uh, we got to figure out a balance there where we do take care of the people who are going to be seriously injured. We've got to figure out how to how to walk that line. Final thoughts for the day going around the room. We are way over time. Miss Nikki. You know, the um, what you're seeing today is prophesied biblically. And it's not making us better. It's it's eroding our fabric of American history, American family, American society. And it's just a sad day. And my plea would be to abandon some of these ideas and really seek the hand of the Lord to bring you the peace and contentment that only he can give you. Amen. Justin. Yeah. So everybody has a philosophy. I think when I think chair philosophy, I think that's really scary to a lot of people going, Oh, because you think of those big philosophers, right? But here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, you have a philosophy. Even if that philosophy is, I don't like Socrates. Guess what? That's a philosophy on Socrates, right? We need to figure out where our philosophy is on these topics and not get pulled because of the culture. And I think we're doing that more and more where we're saying enough is enough. But there are people who are not looking at their actual philosophy on things anymore. They're just going, well, this is what I should do. This is what I should do. Stop thinking like that and start really looking at where is the line what's my philosophy on this and then stick to your philosophy until it's until you need to change it until it's proven wrong you know get a philosophy and hold with it yes josh um yeah adding on on to him is adding on to philosophy uh the culture is you can't just say enough is enough. You have to also have an influence on said culture because if you if you do nothing, it, it's just going to maintain 
the same thing across the board. It's just going to keep on going. But you got to influence, like right now, you got to bring change to the children. You got to help help people out and bring change in their lives and then bring influence. So that's something that I think a lot of Christians miss is that having that relationship. Uh, I was listening to a podcast by Nancy Demaz Wakamuth and she, uh, she had a guest on, I'm forgetting her name for the life of me, but the guest said something interesting. She says, we go into these conversations. She's speaking about biblical womanhood and sexuality uh, in this one podcast. She comes in and she goes, we come into these conversations expecting to educate and a lot of times there's someone who's in an extramarital relationship, maybe they're in a LGBT relationship, whatever. And we come in and we expect to educate them on how it is. And we're going to start in there and we're going to educate this person. And she goes, that's not going to work. You have to have a, you have to listen. You have to listen and ask questions. And when you listen and you ask questions and you ask the right questions, it comes out of their mind and you lead them philosophically. You know, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus used the Socratic method or so Socrates uses the, used the Jesus method, something. Uh, uh, but you notice Jesus asked questions. He led people to start to think. And we as Christians, as a culture, you're right, we have to come in in a in a way where we are winning the person not the debate that's, that's very true mr steve yeah um <clears throat> excuse me um i i agree with man listening to all of you guys y'all y'all spit out some really good stuff here and um asking questions to what um all of this the this one group is wanting is one of the big things you really need to talk about because we we know what their end goal is but the thing is is that we need to know what it is that their path is on how they're wanting to try to get there we're seeing what they're doing but we don't know how they're going about it as they do it. We're just seeing what they're doing. And what we need to do is get involved politically and pay attention to what's happening instead of just going, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You know, we had lots of people come out this last presidential election and really spend a lot of time at the voting booth and vote. We need to continue this and get them to get in and get out people that are behind them in these positions to get them out and put other minded people in that are a little bit sharper and not as liberal minded and want to push these agendas. Because if you don't do that. You're going to continue down the same path, and you're going to continue running into walls constantly. And you're not the Kool-Aid man either, so. Oh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Chauncey. But, yeah. So, the political side, yes, I do agree. But then you got this here. I'm going to take it to the word here. Um, this is out of First John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen, for those that wanted to know the scripture. So it says, "Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, mm. is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it." But he who does the will of God abides forever. So, yes, we need people politically to be in these positions. And Christians, you know, there's a majority of Christians out there to say, well, we shouldn't be taking part of politics because this world is not ours. But I will certainly disagree because your Lord and Savior was thrown in a kangaroo court. And because the kangaroo court was voted by the people and not by the electoral college, <laughs> you know what I mean? Guess what happened with him? Yeah. 
So if you really are not going to fight for your laws and you're really not going to stand on your Christian faith and you're going to allow people to just trample over you. Sorry, but that right there is weak. Well, the scripture says to raise up righteous people to yes, rule over you. Yes, and yeah. there were a lot of prophets in the Bible that were hated for speaking truth. That's right. Amen. And so when Jesus said in John 15 that you will be hated for my name's sake, it's not because of you. It's not because your skin color. It's not because your sexuality. Well, if you rock in that way, you can go to him anyway. But a thing is, you're going to be hated for it. His namesake. Amen. It's not for your sake, because that's pride. We just talked about it here. So if you, let's put it this way, you have this big issue with having and dealing with hate, you better get used to it. Grow some tough skin, because boy, they're coming at us hard. Yeah. And we got to have our defense up. Excellent. Psalms 144. Truth Amen. Is, uh, Amen. A tough thing to deal with. From the chair of economics, just wrapping up for the day. You know, something that you said a moment ago reminded me, and I've said this often on this podcast, I'll say it again. In America, you've been given a birthright to lead. You've been given a birthright. It's very different than when Paul was talking about uh, uh, the higher magistrate of Romans 13 and how you had to obey the higher magistrate. We are the higher magistrate. In Romans 13. And this, in America, we're in a specifically very unique structure where we've inherited this birthright to lead a nation that was founded to ultimately be a godly nation. If you are not participating in it, you are committing the sin of Esau. Esau despised his birthright. He despised the leadership that God had given him as the oldest. He did not care for it. He did not want it. And he said, you know what? What do I care for? I'll give you a bowl of soup. Give me a bowl of soup for it. I want the comfort. I want the immediate satisfaction and comfort. If you are too busy or too tired to protect your children's future because you, you politics is icky or uncomfortable, I humbly suggest to you that you are committing the sin of Esau. On the note of economics, just kind of to finish up, they want to devalue the image bearer status that God has given you. They want to make man to woman, woman to man change. But really what you're doing is you're degrading what God created. And I, I want to back up one step, a second because I said they. Who are they? There are people who hold the ideology but the ideology is the fight, not the people. The people are captives who are being who are bound on a train for hell. And we really, really need to see them as captives to something that is going to take their eternal life. It's going to take away the best thing that they could have. So we need to figure out they're in some Stockholm esque terrible situation with sin. Make sure that when we approach this issue, you're approaching it with people uh, you approach people with love that's the thing you approach people with firm love and that's not passivity either jesus was not passive with the woman at the well he was not passive with the woman caught in adultery he was not passive with the pharisees and by the way he spoke two different ways you notice with the pharisees by the way was the church political or was jesus political who were the Sanhedrin? It was the Senate, and it was the Congress of the Jewish people. He debated go. in Preach. the Senate and in Congress. Preach. Pastors, you are called to be in that space. But, but Jesus had one attitude in the public square towards the group and towards the bad ideas, but then he would go to their house and he would eat with them, which was a sign of friendship and love. And he would not eat there to condone what they did. He would eat there to minister unto them, to talk to them, and to attempt to change their heart. Yep, it's called into repentance. That's what we need to do. That's who we need to be as a people. If we do that, we just might see revival. The end is coming. It is near. Uh, there is There is a time where it's coming where everything on the circle will be wiped away. We see that in Revelation. But guess what? If there's revival, because we turn to him, we repent, we humble ourselves, and we say, Lord, 
give us a little bit more time, he might do that for us. Let's pray that he does. With that said, if you like this podcast, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, with that said, YouTube is making it harder and harder for audio. For audio. Thank you guys for all the listens. It's just trickling over. I think by the time this podcast episode is delivered, almost exactly two years after we started, we will have 200,000 downloads on audio. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and hit that. That's good. I like that. That's a good one. Good one. You found a good one. So with that said, thank you for your listenership. And uh, we have been seeing YouTube delete hundreds, if not thousands of views. So if you are watching on YouTube and your views, a lot of your views are getting deleted. So uh, just be aware of that. And uh, I don't know. We're going to have to do something about that. I don't know what we'll do. Anyway, Rumble, we see you. 75 subscribers now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, And uh, with that, we are on Twitter. And if it's spelled correctly and uh, good proper English, it's me. If not, uh, it is someone else, and his name will be withheld. Oh, also, one him. thing, John Arthur, I don't mean to interrupt you, but if you notice that your subscription has been erased, resubscribe, man, because yeah. they're doing that too. Mm-hmm. You know, getting rid of subscriptions. I've, I've seen that. You know, at times they'll and make sure you ring the bell. Back. You've got to actually ring the bell to get notified when we're doing something because not everyone who is subscribed is seeing these. So uh, make sure you ring that bell because without that ringing that bell, you don't get notified. And you know, you're just subscribed. It doesn't mean anything. So with that said, uh, thank you so much. We love y'all. You have a wonderful week. Have a good one. Bye. All right. All right. If you're still here, if you're still here. Let's go ahead and go around the room. Uh, I, you know, I just don't want to do anything about the Pride Month. I just don't want to do anything specific. What's your favorite car manufacturer? If you had a dream car, if you could pick a dream car, it would be a truck. It'd be a truck. What kind of truck? Would, it would be a truck. It would probably be uh, a, a Dodge, like my husband drives. I like that. Just love that uh, Dodge fifteen hundred. He, he keeps telling me the next one will be mine, but we'll see. <laughs> Justin, I'm not a big car guy, but I will say I really like the Rivian truck. Those are uh, nice. Those are oh, okay. real nice. Oh, so, so you support setting the house on fire if it just decides to explode. <laughs> I've got insurance, <laughs> and he's got you. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, I've got I, insurance. I will die in fire. So <laughs> uh, he's planning you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, honestly, just because um, of work, I, I just like good Ford F-150. I have something a little bit bigger for work. Ooh, but. that four-letter F word. Ooh, my husband doesn't like it. <laughs> Steve, I'm not going to get into it. Dodges fall apart after five years, so I'm not going to get into it. Uh, oh. You know, I I had um, uh, F-350 four-wheel drive, and... Ooh. Man, I really it was diesel, and I really enjoyed that truck a lot. Didn't get to drive it near as much as was I wanted to. Huh? Was it a dually? No. What? No, it wasn't a dually. I, I used it for for hunting a lot because I did a lot of hunting, different types, going off road. Now you're going to be canceled. And uh, <laughs> but I'm not too happy with their. Pride he was. Thing, they kicked them so, off. This was Christian. Uh, you know, but four wheel drive um, truck. You didn't like uh, the Pride Raptor? That. <laughs> <laughs> I might change my idea on what kind, what name brand. Careful, but, careful uh, there, Josh. But, but, but it'll be very awkward when you get out there and see Chauncey's ride. Chauncey, what's your. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Johnson, okay. go ahead. So I'm gonna take a little different approach. So I like Toyota, but I like the luxury side of things, the, the Lexus. And there's a beauty out there. It's the LC 500, and that is a beauty with the greatest of ease. So I yeah. thought it might have been like a you know what a Cadillac or Cadillac. Oh, oh, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, oh, okay, okay. The preachers, the preachers ride. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. It got to be a Deville though. It got to be a Deville. I know somebody's got one. Here. Yeah. Nice. So nice. my uh, my f- I'm driving my dream car. Actually, I'm driving a Ford Expedition. I love when I was a little kid. I wanted an Expedition or an excursion. Really? But, but let's go. Old so drive. my 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 obscene my obscene car would be a uh, uh, 
Humvee off the auction block for five thousand, a fifteen hundred or fifty thousand uh, dollar Duramax swap, and uh, you know four wheel burnouts, twin turbo, eight hundred, nine hundred horsepower. At some someday, I will build that. So if you're like me, this means nothing to you, and you've stopped listening. <laughs> imagine, imagine being able to beat a Lamborghini or a Porsche with the Hummer. Mine, mine, All I had to do is drive over. I'm crunch, crunch, crunch. No, no, no. You're, you're driving over them in the quarter miles. You just roll right over them. <laughs> I'm just saying. You just get an M1 my, Abram then. And- <laughs> there you go. What was, what was nice about mine, I had a 7.3. Oh, and it man in international was was nine. I got a three point six in school. That was my GPA. Was, How'd you get seven point three? We only wonder, went up to four point oh. Man, this is that old grading system. It must be. Yeah, I got a I got a five point oh. Okay, we have pork yeah, ready to go. So, that so said, we gotta get going. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. If you like this, thank you. Tell us down there what your favorite model make car, what your dream car is. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Bye.